Hi, this is Vanessa. We're happy to bring you back to the ASEAN News. And here are the latest ones. Myanmar junta retaliates against ASEAN after banning meetings. Myanmar's military leadership lashed out at the ASEAN grouping of Southeast Asian countries for excluding its general from regional gatherings, accusing it of caving to external pressure. What they, ASEAN members, want us to do is meeting with terrorist group that was declared by us. He said ASEAN was violating its own policy of non-interference in a country's sovereign affairs while facing external pressure but did not elaborate. Members of the ASEAN have heaped a condemnation on Myanmar's junta, which they say have failed to make concrete progress on a peace plan agreed with the 10-nation bloc last year, including engaging with opponents and cessation of hostilities. ASEAN has spared Myanmar's general from attending regional meetings and some members said last month it will be forced to rethink the way forward unless the junta demonstrate progress on the peace plan. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Cambodia, which is currently chairing ASEAN, did not immediately respond to Reuters' request for comment. The junta has declined offers to send non-political representatives instead to ASEAN meetings. Several Western countries, including the United States and Britain, have imposed sanctions on Myanmar's junta over the coup. United Nations Special Envoy meet with Myanmar junta leader amid turbulence in the country. A United Nations in a statement says a senior United Nations official met with Myanmar junta leader and asked him to meet with the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi and call for political prisoners' release. Nulin Hazer, the United Nations Secretary General's special envoy to Myanmar, stated in the media advisory that she has expressed her concern about the situation in the country to junta leader. Referring to the recent execution of four pro democracy activists, the United Nations said Hazer had directly urged the junta to impose a moratorium on all future executions. Myanmar's military leadership last week lashed out the ASEAN grouping of Southeast Asian countries for excluding its generals from regional gatherings, accusing it of caving to external pressure. Members of the ASEAN have heaped condemnation on Myanmar's junta, which they say has failed to make concrete progress on a peace plan agreed with the 10-nation bloc last year, including engaging with opponents and a cessation of hostilities. Aung San Suu Kyi can return home after the verdict in a litany of cases against her. Myanmar's junta chief considers allowing the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi to be moved to house arrest from prison, but only after verdicts in a litany of cases against her have been reached. Meanwhile, the army said Suu Kyi, ousted in a widely condemned military coup last year, was moved to jail in the capital Napidiao in June, where she has been held in solitary confinement. The Nobel laureate and democracy champion, 77 years old, has spent around half of the last three decades under house arrest. Since the coup, Suu Kyi has been charged with at least 18 offenses ranging from graft to election violations and has already been sentenced to several years jail. She has called the accusations absurd and denies all charges against her. Junta chief Ming Ohlin's written remarks read out on a state television came in, respond to a request made by a top United Nations officials who visited Myanmar and asked for Suu Kyi to be allowed to return home. Bali bombing victims and police with bombers early release. A Bali bombing survivor said she was sad and disappointed following news that a bomb maker involved in a deadly 2002 attack will to be released on a parole within days after his sentence was reduced. As a survivor, I don't feel happy hearing this. I hope this doesn't come true because personally, I think too many lives were lost. If I can appeal, I hope the government, especially President Joko Widodo, will please reverse this decision. Because for us, the survivors, while our tears have dried, the pain inside our bodies, our body parts, persist. We still need to continue our treatment and pay a lot of medical bills. Umar Patek, a member of the Al-Qaeda-linked Jama'a Islamiyah, was jailed for 20 years in 2012 after he was found guilty of mixing bombing that ripped through two Bali nightclubs a decade earlier, killing 202 people, including 88 Australians. Zairozi, head of the Law and Human Rights Office in East Java, where Patek was jailed, said the bomber is now eligible for parole because he was served two-thirds of his sentence. Zairozi adds the matter has been passed to the Justice Ministry for final approval, who goes by one name. 
The decision has also sparked concern in Australia, where Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said Patek's release will have been a devastating impact on victims' families. Residents of Bali, Indonesia are on the streets after a moderate earthquake of 5.5. The country's meteorology and geophysics agency say a magnitude 5.5 quake rocked Indonesia's tourist island of Pali with no immediate reports of damages or casualties. According to witnesses, the quake lasted for around a minute and led to many residents spilling from buildings onto the streets. Witnesses said it occurred on 36 minutes past 16 hours local time and was felt across the island and neighboring Lombok. Officials at local national disaster mitigation agencies did not immediately respond to a request for a comment. Meanwhile, BMKG said no tsunami was expected. Singapore will recriminalize sex between men in the country. The Prime Minister said Singapore will decriminalize sex between men, that society in the city-state was becoming more accepting of gay people. He adds, the government had no intention of changing the city-state's legal definition of marriage, that is between a man and a woman. For these reasons, the government will repeal Section 377A and decriminalize sex between men. I believe this is the right thing to do and something that most Singaporeans will now accept. This will bring the law into line with current social mores and I hope provide some relief to gay Singaporeans. He salients, hence, even as we repeal section 377A, will uphold and safeguard the institution of marriage. Under the law, only marriages between one man and one woman are recognized in Singapore. Japan Prime Minister promises to never again wage war. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida pledges to never again wage war on the anniversary of Japan's World War II surrender. We will never again repeat the horrors of war. I will continue to live up to this determined oath. In a world where conflicts are still unabated, Japan, under the banner of proactive pacifism, will do its utmost to work together with the international community to resolve the various challenges facing the world. 787 people attended the ceremony this year, including 592 family members of victims of the war. The anniversary commemoration was linked to Yasukuni Shrine, a site that honors 14 Japanese wartime leaders convicted as war criminals by an allied tribunal, as well as war dead. Japanese anti-war protesters call for peace opposed revision to constitution. Hundreds of Japanese people staged an anti-war demonstration in Tokyo, expressing opposition to the revision to the country's pacifist constitution. Demonstrators from across Japan gathered in downtown Tokyo and marched for peace on the 77th anniversary of Japan's surrender in World War II. The protesters held placards with slogans condemning visits to the notorious Yasukuni Shrine. Men shouted to dissolve the Yasukuni Shrine on their way. Hundreds of police officers remain on high alert, escorting the demonstration, while right-wingers try to break up the protest march. Located in Shiota War in central Tokyo, the Yasukuni Shrine honors 14 convicted Class A Japanese war criminals from World War II. South Korea and the United States fully resume joint military exercises. South Korean Defense Ministry says South Korea and the United States are to fully resume their joint military drills, normalizing and rebuilding the joint exercise. The ministry has said the two countries are set to begin the Ulchi Freedom Shield exercise from August 11 to September 1. <laughs> This joint military exercise is of great significance in rebuilding the Korea-US alliance and solidifying the joint defense posture by normalizing the joint exercise and its outdoor maneuvers. The exercise has been mainly focusing on computer simulation maneuvers, but the ministry said this year's exercise was designed to practice outdoor maneuvers as well. 
Thai police arrest Chinese fugitive in Thailand based on international warrant. Thailand's deputy police spokesman Kisana Patana Charoen says last week they arrested Shed Si Ziang, 40, a Chinese national who also holds a Cambodian passport based on an international warrant and an Interpol red notice. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wong Wenbin at a regular news briefing says that China will work with other countries to enforce the law in response to the arrest of a Chinese fugitive in Thailand wanted by Beijing for allegedly running illegal online gambling operations. Zheng 争取宽大处理。如果拒绝投案自首，积极实施犯罪，必将受到法律的严惩。Shed Cixiang is suspected of having committed the crime of running gambling operations. The facts are clear and the evidence is conclusive. Interpol has issued a red notice against her, and Chinese public security organs are determined to crack down on all kinds of transactional criminal activities in accordance with the law. China will carry out law enforcement cooperation with the countries concerned to bring them to justice. According to Chinese news outlet Kaixing, she has been on the run for the Chinese authorities since 2012 and has been involved in illegal online gambling operations in Southeast Asia. According to the media reports, she is the chairwoman of Yatai International Holdings Group, which has made gambling investments in Cambodia, the Philippines, and most recently developed a $15 billion casino entertainment and tourism complex in Myanmar's Kain state called Shue Koko. Well, thank you everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you soon.